Hi everyone, in this video we want to talk about how to work with tuples in Python programming language, including how to create tuples and also how to work with tuples methods and such other topics. So please stay tuned. Okay, first of all, let's talk about how to create tuples in Python programming language. So for example, maybe we want to create a tuple, let's say called x. So in order to do so, we define a variable called x. We simply type x equals to, and for creating a tuple, we should open a uh, parenthesis and also we should close a parenthesis and inside these two parentheses we need to pass the values that we want to put in our tuple so for, for example maybe I want to put four values in my tuple let's say one two three four so you can see that I have put four values I mean four numbers inside these two parentheses I mean my tuple and here if I print the x variable and also print the type of x variable and if I run the code, you can see that here is our x and the type of our x is tuple. So you can verify that we have defined a tuple in Python programming language. But remember, you can pass different data types to a tuple. For example, here we want to define a variable called y, which is going to be a tuple. And we want to pass different data types to this tuple, I mean this y variable. So we want to pass 1, which is a integer and also we want to pass let's say 3.14 which is a float and we want to pass let's say google which is a text or let's say a string and also we can pass a boolean let's say false and we can pass a complex number like for example 2 plus 3j so here if i print the y variable and also the type of y variable you can see that here is our y and the type of our y is a tuple so you can see that we have passed in different data types to a tuple and remember we cannot do this thing i mean passing different data types in a data type let's say like numpy arrays that we will cover later but here in tuples we can absolutely pass different data types to tuple but remember the identifying and key characteristic of a tuple is not its parentheses is its commas for example here if you leave off these parentheses if you leave off these parentheses and you print the type of x variable and if you run the code you can see that again the type of our x variable is tuple so you can see that the key and the identifying characteristic of a tuple is not its uh, parentheses is its commas but here's the question how can we define a tuple with just one element Maybe you answered this question by this way. For example, maybe you say, okay, I define a variable, let's say called x, and I pass one value inside these parentheses. But unfortunately, this is not true. For example, here, if you print the type of x variable, you can see that your type of x is integer and not tuple. So you should remember that in order to define a tuple with just one element, you should put a comma after the first element because as I said, the key and the identifying characteristic of a tuple is its commas and not its parentheses so if you want to define a tuple with just one element you should put a comma after that first value so here if i uh, print the type of x and if i run the code you can see that the x variable is now a tuple okay let's talk about nested tuples what do i mean by nested tuples i mean we want to define tuples inside tuples so if we define tuple inside another tuple this is called nested tuples so for example here we want to define a variable let's say called x and this is a tuple and we want to pass a let's say b and c and also we want to pass another another tuple which includes one two three so here if we print the x variable and also print the type of x variable you can see that here is our x, here is our x, and the type of our x variable is tuple. So we can see that we have defined nested tuples. I mean, when we are defining tuple inside another tuple, this is called nested tuples. So let's talk about indexing in tuples. You can see here we have defined a variable called x, which is a tuple including a, b, c, d, e, f. And for example, suppose that we want to print this value, I mean this b. So you should remember that Python starts counting at zero. So for example, here, Python says, okay, the element at location zero, not one, the element at location zero is A. 
the element at location 1 is B. So remember that Pythonically speaking, we should start counting at 0. So for example, if we want to print this value, we should print, we put some space for more readability, and uh, I should print x and v1, the value at location 1. I mean, we want to print b, and b is at location 1. So I should print x and the value at location 1. So if I run the code, you can see that here is b. And maybe we want to print this value, I mean e. So we can see that e is at location 4. Remember, Pythonically speaking, you should start counting at 0. So e is at location 4. So you should print x and you should pass 4 because you want the value at location 4. So if you run the code, you can see that here is our e. So let's talk about the slicing in tuples. So suppose that we want to print these values, I mean b, c, d. You can see that b is at location 1, c is at location 2, and d is at location 3. So if you want to print these values, I mean we want a slice of this tuple, so this is called a slicing. If you want to print these values, we should print the values at location 1 all the way up to 3. So we print x and we want the values at location 1 all the way up to, this colon means all the way up to, we want the values at location 1 all the way up to 3. But this should type 4. Why? Because this 4, I mean this second value, is exclusive. So if you if you want the values from 1 all the way up to uh, all the way up to 3, you should type uh, 4. Why? Because this one uh, is exclusive. So if you want the values at location 1 all the way up to 3, you should type 1 all the way up to 4. So here if I print the code, you can see that here is our result b c d okay let's take another example suppose that we want to print these values i mean d e f and you can see that d is at location 3 e is at location 4 and f is at location 5 so if you want to print these values i mean d e f we want to print the values at location 3 all the way up to 5 so we should simply print x and we want the values at location 3 all the way up to 5 but we should write 6 because this one is exclusive so here, if I run the code, you can see that here is the result, D, E, F. And also remember that we can leave off this second value. So if I leave off this second value, it means that we want the values at location 3 all the way up to the end of the tuple. So if I run the code, you can see that we have D, E, F. So again, when we leave off the second element, it means that we want the values at location 3 all the way up to, all the way up to, the end of the tuple. And let's take another example. Suppose that we want to print these values, I mean A, B, C. You can see that A is at location 0, B is at location 1, and C is at location 2. So we want the values at location 0 all the way up to 2. So we should simply type print X, and we want the values at location 0 all the way up to 2. But we should write 3. Why? Because this second value is exclusive. So here if I run the code you can see that here is the result A, B, C. And remember that we can leave off this first value and in this case it means that we want the values from the beginning of the tuple, from the beginning of the tuple all the way up to 3 but not including 3. So here if I run the code you can see that here is the result A, B, C. So again this means that we want the values from the beginning of the list all the way up to 3, but not including 3. Remember that this one is exclusive. Also remember that we have negative indices in Python programming language, but maybe you ask how can we interpret negative indices in Python? For example, here we know that the index of this value is 0, the index of this value is 0, the index of this value is 1, and etc. But how can we interpret negative indices so we can see that here we don't have such a value here so how can we interpret negative indices in python okay in order to interpret the negative indices we should go to the end of the tuple and we call the last element minus one the second last minus two the third last minus three and etc so here if i want to print this b i have two ways the first way is to print x and we want the value at location one and if i run the code you can see that here is b and also we can simply type x minus five because also b is at location minus five so if i run the code you can see that here is b 
and also if i want this f v can simply pass in minus one so if i run the code you can see that here is f why because f is at location 5 and also at location minus 1. But maybe you ask what is the difference between tuples and lists. And remember, if you don't know about lists, I have a video tutorial, my previous video tutorial, which there is a link in the description below. So maybe you ask what is the difference between lists and tuples. For example, here we have defined a variable called x, which is a tuple. And here we have defined a variable called y, which is a list. And you can see that they are very similar to each other. So maybe you ask what is the difference between tuples and lists. And you should notice that the difference between lists and tuples is their mutability. I mean, lists are mutable. I mean, you can change them, but tuples are not mutable. You cannot change them. For example, maybe you want to change this value. I mean, the value allocation one to small b. So in lists, you can simply type, I want, to, I want to change the value allocation, let's say 1, to, let's say, small b. And here, if I print the y after changing that value, you can see that our value has changed. Why? Because y is a list, this y variable is a list, and it can be changed. Lists are mutable, but tuples are not mutable. For example, if you type, if you type, let's say, I want to change the value allocation one of this x variable, which is a tuple to small b, and here if you print the x variable, you will get an error. Why? Because tuples are not mutable. You cannot change them. So here you will get an error because tuples are not changeable. So you cannot change tuples. Okay, let's talk about the methods of tuples. And remember, because tuples are not mutable, I mean, we cannot change them. We don't have such a method like append, extend, remove, or etc. that we have had for lists in previous video. So here, we don't have that much methods for tuples. The first method that we want to talk about is the index, which returns the index of the value that we want. For example, maybe you want to ask Python, what is the index of this value? So simply we type x dot index and we want the index of the b. I mean this b that we have written here. So if I run the code, you can see that the index of b is 1. And maybe you ask what is the result if I, uh, if I want to uh, print the index of a. You can see that here we have multiple a's. The answer is it returns the first value that it sees. For example, if you run the code, you can see that the first A that Python C is this one and the index of this one is zero. So it returns zero. Okay, let's talk about the count method, which counts the repetitions of a value that we want to pass. For example, maybe we want to ask Python, how many A's do we have in this tuple? So we simply type x dot count. I mean, we want to count how many A's do we have in this x tuple. So here, if I run the code, you can see that it says that we have four A, one, two, three, four, and it's true. We have four A's in this tuple. Thank you for watching. Please remember that this series on Python tutorial is going to continue. So please make sure to subscribe and click the bell next to it to be notified of every new video. Thank you for watching.